Welcome to the first episode of Why Not, where we discuss everything about Australian wine and a little bit more wine with some more wine and why not? It's a great little project that's been introduced with Taste of Australia and I'm very lucky to be here today with a great friend of mine with, who I've known for many, many years now, I would say. Hello everyone, my name is Hoi, so I'm very, very uh, honoured to be uh, a part of this wonderful program. And of course, like we were starting to discover, I think one of the most exciting wine culture, I think it's Australian, it's so dynamic. And I think today we're going to really talk about what Australian wine is, yeah. um, really go down some varieties and what the path is as well. Oh, I think they just why, why, why not, huh? Why, uh, why not? not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> okay, well, let, let's talk about a bit of Australian wine and just um, introduction to the audience as well okay. about what Australians are known for. Uh, but of course, we will discover like a lot of different categories. Uh, sparkling wine bubbles. Okay, but we have white wine. Mm. We will speak a little bit about rosé, but actually it's very, very uh, trendy at the moment. Mm. We will have a uh, very lovely red. Alcohol, yeah, red you love alcohol. Like, you know. We have like the robust, how rich, mm. how intensity. But somehow like uh, it's changing because it's all like it's becoming more subtle, more elegant, mm. and actually like it. it it's a thing like a lot of wine country they try to remain but you guys just starting to master how the gentle of the wine how the subtle elegant so i think it is it's absolutely great to discover that the way and we will have uh speak a little bit about fortify and sweet but actually mm. how australian they call sweet wine in in, in your country we call them stickies our dessert wine and uh, i think one of the most unique uh, sparkling Shiraz, mm. I think that's what oh, we're going to discuss today. Uh, so I think let's just jump into it. Oh, fantastic. Uh, so, sparkling. Well, what, what, what can you say about sparkling? I know that uh, sparkling is quite massive within the world and we know that different regions come from different parts of the world. Yeah, yeah. Australia is quite renowned for a Pacific region, I would say, for sparkling. Down the bottom of Australia, a little, a little island would, I would say oh, would be yeah. called Tasmania that oh, produces that's... some of the amazing sparkling that's been on classified, even though it's Australian sparkling, but it's up on that level of the champagne quality. This understanding, mm. like when people think about Australia, because it's quite warm to grow a very high quality grape mm. using for sparkling because you need a, a place that is specific a uh, place with specific terroir and uh, climate, also mm. to the traditions. Tasmania. De definitely in Tasmania, yeah. that's all forestry and yeah. beautiful. As, you Your know. hometown oh. also is like very famous at the moment, it's Asla Hills. I I'm from South Australia, if you didn't know that, so <laughs> we've got the best wine, I say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Yarra Valley, of course, uh, mm. very famous for the sparkling. And I think like Australian wine, I think they made their own ways, they don't try to copy, they don't try to imitate mm. the wine region. They have their own specific quality. Yeah, I would say Australians, we've got our own style as well. And being in the wine industry where you could class us as the new kids on the block, in yeah. a sense, that yeah. we're, we're very young. And there's that terminology of old world and new world. And I think Australian wine fits into that category yeah. of new world. Yeah, uh, it's newer. Yeah, it's newer, newer wine, wine country. Well. Uh, Australian sparkling, you can have like a very traditional non-vintage mm. blending. Uh, the, the, this, this single year, uh, like millisime in, in, in French, but like you have a single vintage, uh, sparkling. Uh, you also have prud, yep. prud nature without any addition of uh, liquor, the tiage or uh, zero sugar, mm. uh, to rosé. That's some beautiful oysters cracking open, you yeah, know, it's fantastic. Good beautiful floral, cheese, red yeah. fruit, very good mineral on that. Great comes. for weddings as well. Great Australian, wedding. Australian weddings are massive with the sparkling as well. Yeah. You can have some mixed with a little bit just to uh, pair with different spicy food, but like mm. a wide range, uh, I must say. And it is great. A lot of people think like how it can age for such a long time. I think like if you look at Tasmania, the climate is actually relatively cold. Mm. Uh, it's even colder in some places in Europe, mm. and they have a very long growing seasons and they have very stable uh, and a lot. Of a lot of uh, blind tasting that put Tasmanian wine 
uh, light to the top three, even light top two, even top one. But what about some white wines? What what is Australia known for? At the moment, uh, let's say first uh, we have uh, just split it to light body. Okay. Or even light. But what what and, would and you aromatic. class as a, what's a light body wine? What, what uh, would which I is find like the, the the wine bring a lot of primary uh, fruit character, which is like the aromas purely from the fruit itself. So you hmm. really suppress a lot of fruitiness, florality, mm. uh, sometimes mineral on, on the tongue. Uh, but not, we didn't talking about like secondary aromas, which is more about the human factor, mm. aging in barrel, uh, malolactic fermentations, or tertiary aromas, which mm. is like for when you have some bottle age. So arom aromatic wine, which is like focused for a very floral, uh, very fresh mm. tongue. And what sort, what sort of grape variety would we find in there? Very good. In your region, they can name like a few. It's very famous. You have Sauvignon Blanc. Very famous. Beautiful. I love, I love a beautiful Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, cracking that open. Mm. But uh, for me, Riesling is more about in Eden and Clare. Mm. You, Definitely you Eden Valley as well. Oh, correct. Huh? And it's, it's great. Uh, great with seafood. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah so many like Sauv Blanc, of course, very famous. I think the best place so far is... Uh, it's all falling back to South Australia here, it sounds like. It's my opinion only, so... <laughs> Everyone's a bit biased sometimes on wine, but we like to expand the horizons. Yeah, for sure. So that's a light wine category. Okay. In short, we have a full body white. And what, is, what would be a full body white? What, straight what Chardonnay. Uh, Shardy, Shardy, mate. Chardonnay. Sorry, Shardy, that's mate. my Aussie slang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's, that's a slang. It's like Chardonnay, like they uh, actually is uh, second most planted in Australian. Uh, you can see Shiraz already. Yeah, Shiraz is, the top, is the top. But the second is actually Chardonnay. Yeah, like it's press a lot of center place in, in Australia. It's not aromatic varieties like mm. Sauvignon Blanc or Riesling. But it can grow like mostly anywhere. Very yeah, easy to grow. Mm. Uh, but the thing like if we're talking about secondary aromas, which is like the aromas uh, from the human factor, like aging the barrels, mellow what, what, so, what are we going to get? When you age the wine's oak, mm. for example, you have a lot of like uh, smoke, of course, that's the first thing. But you have a lot of like spice, vanilla. Mm. If you do like some new like American, you have a little bit of coconut mm. also. Some region again. I have to back to your place, Adelaide. I don't know why it's coming back <laughs> to Adelaide Hills. Yeah, yeah. I have a like Mornington Peninsula, my own time favorite. Uh, that's many, yeah, of course. We're easy, so, and we like to blend some whites sometimes yeah. as well. And talking about that wine there, what would you generally see it blended with? Yeah, normally we have classic blend, right? We have Sauvignon Blanc, Sauvignon, very yeah, that, famous in Mar River. Very easy drinking uh, as well. We, yeah, we very like good it. body. Sauvignon Blanc, Sauvignon Pernon, predominantly for whites. We have mm. Marsan, Roussang also. Oh, that's another Australia great that we're, we're playing around with in yeah. Australia as well. Uh, you do quite a lot of classic, but the thing is like the climate is so stable. Uh, you didn't have any like frost or hail or rain during the oh, harvest. The, the, so you're best to doing single. Pray, pray, yeah. So the climate is very suitable for making single varieties. Mm. Tasting different grapes from around Australia say a chardonnay from this location yeah, to a chardonnay yeah. there it can be completely yeah different, yeah, yeah. You know? it's my plan your mind well mate i like why we're talking about the white i got some pretty fun ah. stuff here. <laughs> so make a good pour nice okay so what do we generally do when we're tasting wine oh uh, because like new world world country uh, grape varieties, mm. uh, region, and vintage. So if you can guess the uh, producer, of course, I will give you like another bottle and we drink together. A producer would be <laughs> quite hard to pick out. But yeah, it's something to know at home as well when tasting wine as well. Um, yeah. The different characteristics that will come through via glassware is very important, yeah. tasting yeah, wine. Very... Um, the way you swirl the glass to pull out aroma. Oh, I think you could elaborate yeah, 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 a lot yeah, sure. more than me but yeah looking yeah. at the coloration I think we're just looking we, we, we sniffing and then we taste it's just looking i think what do you think it's a young wine it's an mm. old wine or? and so, yeah looking at the temperature feeling temperature as well very important yeah. as well Every, many yeah. factors to go into it yeah. but so yeah it's looking quite at it, it's lovely pear right like a bit like pear lemon it's not too watery 
It's lovely, mm. just pale, okay. like medium viscosity. Citrus grass on the nose. Yeah. Fresh, in Very a sense. Fresh. fresh, yeah. Yeah, you got like love, like love primary character, like lamb. Lemon. Yeah, cit citrusy like, coming like, through like, as well. Uh, melon also, pears. Yeah, pear, pear, pear. It's, fre it's very fresh. fresh and crisp. That's where I get as well. You smell some oak or some nutty nuttiness? The nuttiness, I get a little bit of cream. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's how I would, I would pronounce the nuttiness for me, is that creaminess throughout. Um, almond sort of style. Mm. But min minerality, yeah. that citrus, you feel it in your mouth go. Yeah. Yes. Pulls back as well. Yeah, to keep your, just your salavi, your salavi, just like keep coming. Uh, fresh, very lovely acidity. I think it's got some oak, but not like not not too much. Not like yeah. too much. Yeah. It really in, well integrated it's well into balanced. the wine. It's very balanced, and the finish is lovely. It's not really like heavy, creamy, uh, oaky finish. It's just like a lot of fruitiness. Hmm. Like it, it make a very it's newer. But very proper, very, very proper. But it's a, by the taste of it, it's a great wine that can be enjoyed by itself. Yeah. Um, but this would be enjoyed for me with the taste as well. Yeah, with like the hot a climate, tropical climate here, you can go to the beach. It's great really with spice, great with seafood yeah. as well, kicking sure. through. I don't know. So, um, what's the crab variety? I think here. It's tasty, I'd say Chardy. Chardonnay. Yeah. yeah. From where? You would think? For me, this could be coastal. Coastal uh, areas. Coastal. This yeah. is what I look at. Peninsula, sort of coastal as well. Oh, okay, it's a good guess. Is it a Chardonnay or? Is it's it? a Chardonnay okay, indeed. Well, oh, thank you, you are for, amazing. Thank you for that. That's yeah, yeah. basic. It's coastal region, of course, we have many. You can name straight or you do, yeah, or Chardonnay from well, coastal. What, what do we got? Oh, sure You're right. leaving me in suspense. It's, it's green, so probably it's not from the Huck wine, right? It just... So like you are absolutely the Aussie taste. The lay is the uh, Bottoli. Ah, oh, I and nailed Yara, that. Of course, cost uh, like a Yara Valley 2018. Well, what about reds? Well, I think just split it to light body. We have some medium from Merlot, uh, but also some full and rustic. Oh, well, what, what's some red varieties that would be lighter body that we can uh, start on? I think famous, yeah, of course, you have the light, you have the Pinot Noir. Oh, Pinot. Uh, yeah. I think everyone's love Pinot. Uh, yeah, juicy, we like juicy, juicy strawberry, aromatic, got like very flowing. Actually, it's very finicky to grow because uh, it's so harsh, it's so sensitive with uh, the change. Even like a small single change mm. during the rain, uh, the year is quite warm, quite cold, so it changed dramatically to the berries. So you oh, taste wow. significantly different. It's a hard work for mm. everyone. Especially like vigneron, uh, viticulturist, or even winemaker to to make a, a proper pinot. Going through there, there's different parts where yeah. different. You, it's fantastic to grow pinot. Yeah. I'd say different that, GI Tas Tasmania. Is Tasmania is very yeah. phenomenal at the moment. Uh, Mornington Peninsula, if you need a little bit more weight. Mm. Uh, Yarra Valley is more fruitiness, like a little bit spice sometimes, a little bit of... Yeah, I, I do uh, like a little bit of spice, and that's a very good point yeah, in there as and, well. Yeah, uh, and Adelaide here is like gentle, elegant, very floral. Mm. And if you want to more discover, I think like Pinot in Marret River. Mm. It's also like uh, fruit bomb, but not too overwhelmed. But it's a good introduction to red wine. Um, definitely if you haven't had a red yet. Um, open up a bottle of Pinot and give that bit yeah. of a go. To give, yeah. give it a pretty much. What about medium to full body wines? What, what can we expect there in Australia? That medium, you have like Merlot, Tempranillos. Yep. If you love a little bit more well. tobacco spiciness, but like the best thing about Australian wine is they can balance the bold, the rustic, the richness, the intensity with elegance. Hmm. It's just when you taste a very big wine, but when you taste it, you feel like it's just like very velvet. Yeah, velvet, soft on the palate as yeah, well. Yeah, I think that's well. a very signature of like when you're talking about Australian wine. Uh, moving toward from really high alcohol market demand, rich, sweet, red. Now they move to their own style. The I, I do region. like a nice little bit of alcohol kick there behind. Yeah, yeah. You feel it, give it a but it's balance. Yeah, but yeah, it's balanced. Yeah, it's just smooth, balanced. You know? It's just amazing, like how they do it. Medium, yeah, Merlot. Yep, definitely uh, Merlot. 
Maclo, uh, yeah, uh, Tembranino, of course, uh, Torriga Nice soon now. I would love to taste and have a taste, but a lot, a lot of good feedback about it in McLaren there. Moving to Torres, to Big and Bold. Uh, I, I think we have the Shiraz. Oh, sure. Uh, Australian Shiraz, well known for, I would say, kicking around. Yeah. What, and, what about, uh, there's another one. Uh, you have a Cabernet, I think. Yeah, yeah, well, oh, come on. <laughs> you tried to pull me again, of course you know it. Cabernet, oh, yeah, Capsaf, uh, Shiraz. Uh, indeed. Um, well, we, what, what can you say about these varieties? I just talk about Shiraz. I think it's hey, just like the symbolism. Let's talk about straight before this is we talk the about symbol blend. of Australian wine. If you're talking about everyone, okay, this is Shiraz. In mm. front, they can see her. Uh, you have very uh, traditionally, it's the first growth in uh, New South Wales in Hunter Valley. Um, yeah, Shiraz, amazing there. Uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. So we have Kunawara, very good. And I think the first. Uh, Cabernet Sauvignon in Western, you say Margaret River. Margaret, yeah, kick down uh, there. Mambac uh, blending together with Capsap, Merlot, and actually oh, it's very we're very popular on a GSM. So oh yeah, GSM. A, yeah, GSM, yeah. you can't not forget about and that. And all the Holy Trinity, GSM, yeah. Grenache, uh, Syrah, Mataro. Mataro, so yes. It's Mouvet. You can make a single wine from 100% Grenache because the weather is so kind. Mm. Uh, you can blend GSM also, it doesn't have some diversity on it uh, oh yeah, correct there's a lot of character going through there and depending on the winemaker producing yeah. that wine as well they do the different ratios and you know those different ratios yeah. really affect the end taste. Yeah. Uh, i think uh, i think we forgot to talk about famous blend uh cabernet shiraz oh another one oh, yeah. yeah you have another one also like and actually not so many countries nowadays they 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 do that uh, signature blend i think like cabernet sauvignon shiraz together you have the black fruit, the, the good mouthfeel, harsh tannin from the Cabernet Sauvignon. And you have the Shiraz, the curly tannin in the middle of your tongue. And you add a little bit more spice in yeah, it, the more spice dimensions. comes through as well, yeah. Oh, man, I love the reds. But I actually brought something along as well today <laughs> for us, you know. So before you gave me a bit of a white, put me on my toes. So let's oh, see what man. we can do on a red here. I'm <sighs> checking goosebumps here. Oh, me too. I got goosebumps because we're going to crack some red. And okay. a good thing about Australian wine as well, with today as well, with wine not, um, something that we're proud ourselves on, um, yeah. that crack, you know? Yeah, lovely. Screw caps, easier for wine. Easier for wine. Oh, lovely. There we go, keep doing that one. Cool. Beautiful. So with this, um, I don't think we will need to let it open up too much but we'll give it a good swirl in there you can have like a very gastronomic or very very food friendly uh red outfits which is like when you open and you drink straight away you don't need it doesn't need any time to open to be oxygenated right it's just like fully open it and you just drink like there are some like if you're talking about really fine wine spectrum and, mm. and you see like a lot of good red need some time to actually like overrate oh, similar for red light uh you might need some decanting which is like you pour into a decanter just some aerating the wine and decanters uh, come in different shapes yeah form, but a general decanter open they can up, have a very like uh, very normal traditional classic we, i think we have some here uh but for some wine i think like uh, it really needs time like Half an hour, an hour, even two but hours. That's with friends. You start up. on a, a bottle of white first. You yeah. open up, let the red open up. You know, have some yeah. conversation. Sure, sure. That's the fun about wine. Sure. It takes time. Sure. But like based on the color, I think it's not it's not a very easy going wine. I think it has a lot Ooh. of potential. Just, just get get your nose on that yeah. one. It's nice, right? Very lovely ruby. Yep. Uh, like medium intensity, medium viscosity here. Quite a good alcohol, but not over extracted so 14 14 by 5 i'm, I'm loving knows. i'm loving to see what you're going to pull out of this yeah out of your yeah nose, huh? okay just see under and then and i think like uh it's quite useful like it's quite quite uh, uh useful uh not only brown brick on the wheel mm. so just yeah. me ho ho gum tree huh? and yeah you <laughs> eucalyptus yeah very proud berry but leather intense yeah the blackberry. Blackberry, yeah. The uh, jam. Cassis. Mm. Actually, like the condition is very fresh mm. and it's quite clean. It's, it's, it's very straightforward wine. 
but like the smell is still a bit tight. Mm. It like it's just tight, uh, and I think it's, it needs some time for decanting or to think open this, up. This, but uh, yeah, but like it's blind testing. So oh, okay. this is the best way when you do blind testing. You just open. Oh, have, a t- have a taste. Let's see. Oh, it's good. It, uh, something it really coats your mouth. So let's see. Dry in the sense comes mm. around. Berry. Really yeah, a lot, lot of cherry. Front, yeah, front front. Lot. Yeah, cherry skin tight as well. Very fresh here. Uh, not really harsh tannin. Mm. Not a big blockchain tannin. Mm. Instead, it's uh, it's not even powdery tannin, but it's very 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 smooth, very soft, very well integrated also with the oak, but not even like 100% new oak here. Mm. Uh, this is quite like an intermediate wine. I think it has some age. I think okay. it, has, it has some age. Uh, so probably like five years old, maybe 2017. Of course, I think this is from a costa, mm. from Costa. Do, do, uh, do you think it's a straight red, one variety, or do you think this would be oh, one of my favorites? I, I think mixture. it's blend, maybe peppermint. Mm. And for those at home, that there is a lot of flavors and smells going through, and that's the fun about wine. That's yeah, what yeah. you should be experiencing yeah. as well. It just, it's, it's not one single frame. It takes a lot of time for you to enjoy. And this is the fun thing about wine. It's not like one product, one drink, and then you knew everything. It will take you a lot of time to sit back, uh, to discover more and it has so many nuances and now it's starting to open more floral but like I think it's a cap, maybe caps up blend uh, but I think it has a little bit of like the velvety of Merlot and maybe two upscale ones not upscale but like I don't know I think so we're going but down the path we're going saying a blend. blend we're saying a blend I think okay. a blend let's see save how it went. for oh. dinner we will have a very good dinner together all right this way Oh, so you're on a oh, well done on the vintage as well, 2017, and we're on a blend there as well, Cabernet um, frontage, but with a bit of a Merlot Malbec. And <laughs> okay, that's right. So well done. Oh, what about what about something else from Reds? We really expand in. We say after dinner or even beforehand, we've got fortifieds. Yeah, you got fortifieds. So, what, what are fortifieds? Yeah, fortifieds actually the wine strengthens the alcohol or it boosts the alcohol uh, during the fermentations by adding spirit. So normally grab spirit. So mm. they, they, they raise the alcohol between 15.5 to 21. It's got a bit more of a punch yeah. to it as it's well. It's good for sta- uh, stabilize the wine, good for the storage. Mm. And then, and I think back then, like uh, before you have uh, Dr. Penfold, so he's the one who, who used that type of fortified wine when he treat the patients. Uh, when at that time the pills, he is quite rare. And actually yeah. he gave that fortified wine Using to it him. as a medicinal purpose yeah. back yeah. then. Uh. But like you have also what? The sweet wine, right? Great brands out there in Australia where you just crack the bottle and that light fizz. Beautiful with anything spicy as well, Asian food. That's Even right. on that hot summer's day, you crack open a bottle of Moscato, a little fizz, and just kick back. Oh, as nice! Well. And uh... um, but even going back to what we discussed at the start about sparkling wine, the Australians now are very adapting with more bolder sparkling. Uh, where I'd say they use a red grape, they sure, make something sure. like a sparkling Shiraz. Yeah, sure. The sparkling Shiraz, indeed. I think you also have very good label. Try this Simeon. Mm. Uh, you also have a very, very specific humidity to create. That's noble rot, just to, just like exactly the same uh, how you, how people did with sweet wine back in Sotan. I think we, we still have we still have another tasting. Oh really? Come on, it's not over yet. Ah uh, okay. So, something to really come back about. What maybe oh. I'll let you do the honors on this one, huh? But something that being discussed yeah. earlier was talking about sparkling something very cool in Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, what we have been sparkling Shiraz. It's a red sparkling, of course, uh, and not so many regions. I would say nowadays. Christmas has come early now. And of course, like uh, the way of making, of course, you can have like method champagne, traditional method of making sparkling, but uh, using for red sparkling, which is very, very pricey, which very costs a lot of effort. But like the good for sparkling Shiraz is when you drink, of course you chew it fairly amount, put it back. You can have like big cheese flat. Oh, I'll hide over here, mate. Yeah, you sure. <laughs> no, he's a professional, so yeah. 
Okay. Beautiful way to open. Thanks, mate. And you can have like a very fair, dry, sparkling Shiraz until uh, fairly lightly sweetness. Mm. Uh, but it's paired so well with so many uh, desserts, cheese. Uh, well, I'm, I'm glad this is. I'm glad this is not a blind tasting. No, uh, it's nice. just beautiful ruby, beautiful sparkle. grape juice. Yeah. Andrew and Garrett, they are very good hands making this type of wine. Mm. This meal is very good mousse, like it's very fine, uh, not really aggressive, which is like very well made wine. Mm. Oh, beautiful as oh, well. Oh, it's nice. Yeah, that, that nose like, is beautiful as well. Christmas cake, or like blueberry. Oh, but that perfume, the yeah. perfume aroma as well coming through. Yeah, violet. That violet. Yeah. Beautiful cherry. Red fruit, you'd say through the berries coming through. Hmm. Yeah, very good. You have the tiny and then you have the bubbles. So let's see how it can balance. Oh, that's lovely. Mm. The bubble hit your palate, it moves around as well. But the shrat, the dryness comes in. Yeah. The fruity. Like the, there's like... a fruit. No. Oh, it's a beautiful drop as well. Juicy. So, no, no, it's juicy. 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 <laughs> oh, cheers for that, mate. And thank you for the yes. time today as well. Thank you very much for joining in today with our first episode of Why Nots. In our next episode, we'll be having another special guest join us and we'll be discussing about the wine regions around Australia and what makes wine great coming from Australia. We look forward to having you tune in with us. Thank you again.